Hi, welcome back for another eight Caillou challenge. This is called ASCII total. You'll be given a string and have to return the sum of all characters as an int. The function should be able to handle all printable ASCII characters. And this is eight Caillou, so it's for absolute beginners. Don't worry if you don't know what ASCII is. You can Google this. You'll find the ASCII table. It stands for American Standard Code for Information Interchange, and that's a mouthful. But just look at the table below and you'll notice that each character that you can sort of print on your keyboard, there's a corresponding number associated with it. And this column shows decimal, the HX means hexadecimal, and the oct means octal. And these are just different numbering systems, like binary is all ones and zeros. Octal would have eight different digits, hexadecimal would have 16, and decimal, of course, is base 10 that we all know. So all these values are actually the same, you know, 36, 24, 44, but they're just represented in different numbering systems. So don't be confused by that. Um, yeah, even pound sign, dollar sign, they all have a, an integral value associated with them. And so that's sort of what we're going for. They want us to process all these characters that we get in a string, find the associated value with it, the numerical value, and get a total of those. So that's what they're asking you to do there. They give some examples. A was 97. Let's just make sure that match. Lowercase a is right here. And see how it's 97? That's why they expected the 97 over here. And AAA would be 97 times 3. And what would that be? That would be like 270 plus 21. So 291 looks correct to me. So I think that's clear enough. Go ahead and come on over. Bang this one out. Pause the video, come back when you're ready, and I'll do two solutions. I'll do one with LINK. Remember LINK, L-I-N-Q, stands for Language Integrated Query, I believe. And I'll use one doing just basic um, language constructs. So let's do that one first. Uh, let's make a total, and of course we'll initialize it to zero. And then we will loop over the string, process each character, add its integer value to the total and then finally we will return the total i'm going to opt for a for each loop here so i'll say for each character ch and string you could use a regular for loop if you'd like and set i equal to zero i is less than the length of the string plus plus i whichever one you like i use the for each loop when i don't need the index value when i don't care it's if i don't need it why bother with it so that's why I opted for the for each. And then I'll say total plus equals ch. Remember, this is just a fancy shorthand for saying total now equals total plus ch. And C sharp is smart enough to, you might be saying, well, ch is a char, total's an int. How can I add those together? But C sharp has already implemented this. It's smart enough to know to grab the integral value of this and add it to the total. It's similar to if you had a string and you tried to add a number to it. It's already been taken care of for you where it will know to treat that as you saying you want the numerical value transformed into a string and appended on to the end of the string that you added it to. So someone already took care of those default implementations for us. And then finally, you can just return your total once you've gone through every character and added it up, you have the total. So something like this I would expect to work. We hit the test, we'll run the full suite of tests, and we're green, good. So one other thing, I will show you a way to do this with link. And as I say in this 8 Caillou, this is for absolute beginners, I don't do this to intimidate you, but it's just out there. This You can think of it like extra credit. I'm just getting it in front of you so you can see it now, and hopefully it'll be less intimidating later when you're ready for it. So to use link, I'm going to bring in the system link namespace. Remember, we have to bring in these namespaces when we're going to use code that's already been written for us, right? We can't just write out method names that haven't been implemented. We, they've got to be defined somewhere, and that's how we achieve that with these using statements. We're saying using system link. And the link method I'm going to use is one called aggregate. And if you know the meaning of that word, you can probably see the connection there, because we are 
aggregating or adding things up. Aggregate's nice because it's more general. You can use it for if you were doing products, right? You, you had to multiply a bunch of values together or um, combine a bunch of strings together. It's, it's, it's even more general purpose, which makes it very flexible. Uh, don't be intimidated by the in some of the information here. I'm going to get you right down to an example that uses integers. This is one with strings, but they have a nice one here with integers. So imagine you had this collection of values, and then we'll see aggregate here. This first value is what they call the seed value. It's just what total our total is going to start at. So we'll use 0, 2. And then what also might be new to you is we finally got a lambda with more than one parameter. Whenever you see lambdas with one parameter, they omit usually the parentheses around it. It's not necessary when you only have one. But since we have two here, um, you need the parentheses. And that's just like in the functions you see the parameter list, right? You have the function name, then it has parentheses, and within those parentheses are parameter names. Same thing here, it's just we're not specifying their types like you would if you were writing out the full method. Uh, total will then be this value, which will be modified as we loop through. Aggregate will loop through all the values in ints. And next represents each element in ints. So it'll start at 4, then the next will be 8, then the next will be 8, then the next will be 3, etc. And you can see what they're doing here is they're checking if it's even. And if it is, then we're going to increment total, otherwise not. So it's like it's counting the number of even values in that collection. And we're going to do something very similar to this. If you want, you could even copy this, but it might be good for you to type it out as well. So as usual, read all you want on this document page. It's just kind of overwhelming for beginners with all these generic types and um, these, like down here, these extension methods, it confuses people. So I try not to go into this in the eight Caillou series too much. You see that this keyword precedes the first um, sort of parameter, if you will. So I'm not going to beat you up with that in the 8 Caillou series. We talk more about it in the harder challenges. But as usual, you can always ask me questions if you want to. I'll hap happily answer those for you. So let's use aggregate. We'll say we can do this with one line. We'll say return string. That's the collection that we want to grab elements from and aggregate, right? So I'm calling aggregate on string. And we know that strings are collections of characters. So um, my seed value is going to be zero, just like remember when I did this out before, I had int total equals zero. We're starting from zero. And then I've got to have my parameters for aggregate, right? They called theirs total. I think that's a great name for the total. So I'm going to use that too. They called theirs next, but you just want to use something that refers to each element in string. I typically use ch for characters, so that's what I'll call mine. But these names are of your choosing. Notice they're not keywords. The keywords are these ones in purple, right? Like string is a keyword. These down here, they're parameter names. I get to pick them. Then we use the arrow, and then we get to put um, the, the sort of the body of the function. In this case, it'll be an expression. And what do we do? We want to do just like we did before. It's the same thing. We'll say total plus equals the character. And this will increment uh, total starting from zero each time we'll add the character value. And if you go back to aggregate, you'll notice, let's go to the return type, returns t result, which is an integer in our case, but it says the transformed final accumulator value. And that's precisely what we want. Aggregate we called on um, while our, our total was an integer, so that's... That's the type. So something like this, I would expect to work. Remember, if we don't bring in link, there's no there's no implementation of this. Look, if we try to run this, it's going to say, what's aggregate? What are you talking about, man? Um, see, string does not contain a definition. I, I invoke this method on string, and there's no definition for it. And you might even be wondering, like, how does it work um, even with would you bring it in, right? Because it's still not the string class, right? String still doesn't contain a definition for aggregate. And again, I'm sorry if I'm getting too far ahead. I'm going to try not to, but that's the magic of these extension methods, what they're called. When you see the this keyword with a parameter, that's an extension method. And so we're actually um, adding functionality to 
a type, in this case a string, we're actually making extra um, features of the string class without actually having to go in and modify the string class itself. So you can use this technique in other cases too, however you like. But again, I'll try not to get too far ahead, but I know people wonder and a lot of people appreciate the information. So um, don't feel bad if you don't understand, that's okay. This stuff seeps in over time. I didn't understand it the first time I saw it and did it. It took many times and then one day it just kind of, you just realize like, oh yeah, I get it, makes sense now. So don't feel bad, we passed. I'll go ahead and return mine this way. I'll be the cool kid with the one liner. Um, nothing else really to clean up here. Go ahead and submit and yeah, sure. They used uh, the sum some method there that's fine that, that's actually you know maybe simpler aggregate like i said was really generalized since i was adding maybe it's better that they used um some but see what else you can learn from people um yeah lots of some there here's like what we did before right we just added and you notice they casted theirs to an int and that's okay we saw it worked without having to cast remember i said total plus equals ch i didn't even cast mine to an integer kind of new but this doesn't hurt. You're just being ex you're explicitly saying to treat this um, character as a um, as an integer. Sorry about that. Let me see if I can navigate back. I get a little click ha happy sometimes there. Well, anyways, you can go through the rest of the solutions and see what you can learn from other people as well. As usual, thank you for watching. Thank you for those likes and subs. You guys are awesome and gals are awesome who do that. Thank you. That helps the channel a lot. I will see you in another video. Keep up the good work.